Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Brad Oop. I wanted to, I've got a uh, UFC, Top UFC Museum Collection, Canvas Collection, one of one original sketch card here that I'm working on. I'm going to draw it on camera for you guys. I thought, I wanted to do, uh, well, I have a lot of pencil there that I didn't think. Yeah. Oops. I wanted to do a card start to finish on camera, and I tried that, and didn't really work, um, so I tried again a couple times. There's a there's a couple things that make that really difficult to do, um, but I've done it many times on my channel, just not with an official Topps UFC card. Um, so anyway, I've got a card here in, you know, that's already kind of got the. It's my process is this. I do show you my tools too. This is a mechanical pencil, 0.5 lead I think, very thin lead. I do a thin outline sketch and I usually sleep on it to make sure I like how it looks and that you know things to be in, seem to be in the right place and then I go with a 0 0.03 Copic multi-liner which is a very thin ink line. Um, I also use a a 005. This one's not Copic, but it's more or less the same zinc. Uh, and a 03 Micron. It's funny that I have three different brands, but I use pens from all three of those brands. Um, but it, for this outline part, I usually use the 0.03. It's the thinnest line. And then sometimes I'll use the other ones for areas where I want a little bit thicker line later on, like drawing in hairs and things like that. Um, I've also got a couple gel markers, Jelly Roll White, uh, 05 is the thin one, 08 is a little thicker for highlights at the end, and then Copic Markers, might be using this one right here because she's got some green, let's go for it. Um, so once I get the basic sketch in pencil, I actually want a darker green. um, and my next step is, none of these are going to be dark enough, I don't think, um, is to use the multi-liner and outline everything. And then I go in with the Copic markers. Um, let's see here. So this cardstock has been really tough to work with, but... Just winging it anyway. I'm doing the best I can with it. You know, this almost needs a blue green. I'm testing out. You think that I would test? Oh, I know what I want. It's right here, my red ocean thing. Test. Oh yeah, I'm gonna use that, but I'm gonna use that mostly over here. No, even that's not dark enough to need that. So this cardstock really lightens up the markers. And it's been very difficult for me because of that. Bright parrot green sounds like the right one, but it's just not super, it's not super bright. It just kind of gets light. I don't know how much you guys can tell. It's not super vibrant on the card, but we'll do, it'll, it'll work. My, there's no lack of color in my cards, that's for sure. I don't know why I'm starting with the green. It would almost make more sense to start with the face and the skin tones and stuff, but I'm not gonna. Just touch a little bit down there. Um, and I'll probably have to go in. Like I said, get a blue-green type thing going in there. That might help. Yeah, not much. Do a lot of this. I do a lot of putzing around, futzing around, and testing different colors till I find the one I want. Ooh, that one's gonna bleed all over the place. You see that? You see how quick when I hit the card, it's just going. It's all juicy. Can you see how juicy it is? I gotta watch out for that. One of these jobbies here. 
doesn't happen very often. There's just certain markers that are like overloaded with ink right from from the store. And this is definitely one of them. That that co this color helps. It's um, that green looks a little better now to me. Um, and honestly, I could maybe use that. Try and process blue. Yeah, that would be pretty good. And that, I chose this. So this card is uh, Jessica Andrade. She just. Ooh. I'm not gonna go too nuts with the detail in here on this design. She just lost her title to Wei Li Zhang. She had won the title from Rose Mount Yunus with a very impressive slam. She slammed Rose on her head in a fight that Rose had been winning up until then. But it was one of those fights where I kind of went went away, you know, impressed with both, both girls because Rose looked so sharp, but then it, then Andrade ended up winning with like a super power move. Um, and she had, given that she just lost the title, like, right before I drew this, like, a week ago, she might seem kind of like a strange choice to draw, but A, she's, I, I, I like her, I like her fighting style, she's one of, one of my favorite, you know, female MMA fighters, for sure, um, she's a star in the sport, and she has just some awesome photos, reference photos, there, there was actually at least two or three others that would have made an awesome photo, I thought, for the set, but only I'm doing a handful of cards, so I'm definitely only going to do one of her or one of anyone else for that matter. Uh, most of my cards I used really expressive bright colors on, and this one, like, uh, not necessarily going with the realistic, accurate colors, and this one I'm going to stay pretty, pretty accurate, pretty true to the real, to the actual colors in the photo. What's that called? The local color? Actual color? Something like that. Just try to. I try to give the illusion of detail more than actual detail. I I used to try and draw super super detailed, and I found it eventually just kind of tedious, and realized that those extra hours getting every little like all these little white things, the designs on the on her headdress. I'm gonna. I'm just going to uh, kind of go with the, uh, the jelly roll, the white jelly pen, the white gel marker at the end, and draw those back in rather than trying to make everything perfect here. I think that right there gives, you know, the illusion or whatever or the style of how that works just fine. Do a lighter color. It's hard to the the biggest challenge I found with this set is picking the right marker because you don't know until when I touch it here I can see what color it is, but when it goes here, see how much lighter that is? Can you tell? I think you can even tell that it's so much lighter, it barely shows up. So that's been my challenge with this cardstock. I have to pick a color that's darker than what I think I'm going to need or want. And that's this one. too many white spaces in there. 
Um, let's see. I want this to be part tutorial, but part... I don't know, I, I just... It occurred to me, as I was starting on this set, that I haven't done too much where I've actually done my official cards on video. I've got plenty of videos, and I think it... You know, on my YouTube, I've got plenty of videos of me drawing personal sketch cards and whatnot, but I think it's because it's a fair amount harder to do these to do these because I can't afford to screw up on them because I don't get, you know, don't get extra blanks and things like that. You, we usually get one extra blank, but anyway, like, I think I, I don't know if that makes any sense because it's not like I don't try to do good on my commission cards too, or whatever, you know, any other card, it's just... Uh, it doesn't feel like as much pressure if I'm doing that on video. If I goof up, it's no big deal. And here, if I feel like if I goof up, it is a big deal. So, I need a super, super dark coloring here, too, real quick. To go, there's some in-betweens. And I'm actually going to go to my favorite dark, which is this. Iris, it's purple. So, um, it'll give it a little bit of vibrancy, even though there's clearly no purple in here. Purple's a great color for shadows and stuff. So I'm gonna go purple, and let's see. Kind of between some of these. Like just a purple slice to create the gaps. I really want to get back to doing more YouTube videos as well. Like, my YouTube channel has been more the last six months or even a year, maybe, more about my uh, baseball card collecting than my artwork. And I want it to be more about my artwork overall. I just have been in a different, uh, I don't know. I got to get back to focusing more on, and more on, more on artwork and less on collecting is part of it, for sure. That is part of it. Sorry, when I, you know, left, left brain, right brain, when I'm drawing, the right brain kicks in sometimes. All of a sudden I forget I'm supposed to be talking because I'm on video. Um, anyway, let's talk UFC and UFC sketch cards. I got my start in official sketch card sets with the UFC. The first set I did, the, the first official set I did for Tops or any other company was Tops UFC Bloodlines 2012. And from there, it just kind of took off. I started doing, let's see, I got contacted by Leaf and a couple other companies that weren't Tops but had seen my Tops work. And the sketch card thing was kind of booming back then, and it was opportunities were much better. Pretty soon, the markets, you know, the last couple of years, I feel like the market has been more flooded with artists, um, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Um, but there was not, just not as many artists in the pool in, you know, 2012, 13, 14 as there are right now. Some, maybe, discolored to get some of these. Eh, 
this is late sun tan. I don't love the way that looks. And see how it's definitely, i, I got to be careful not to pick up the purple. It's, it's happening. But it's okay to a, an extent, but i got to be careful. Like I don't drag that into like a light area for skin tone. So I've done my share of now UFC sets and baseball sets and Star Wars and then with other companies, Rittenhouse, um, Game of Thrones, Star Trek. UFC is my passion, probably, I would say, out of all of those. Um, the reason I got the gig doing UFC, the 2012 Bloodline set, I'm, I was the only artist on that set is because I was drawing UFC artwork. Before that, I was doing sketch cards and stuff. And when they decided they wanted sketch cards in the UFC product, they found my work. Um, let's see, this is going to be the most important part, which is getting her skin tone. Right, and I'm trying to remember what I've been using. <laughs> I'm hoping, I wasn't perfectly happy with the likeness or whatever on my sketch compared to the photo, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident that that's going to come with this part of the drawing right now. With my, when I, once I go in with the values on her face, I think that that will work better. And I'll capture that. There's, she's got an intensity about her um, that I think that I'll capture once I get these, get this going here a little bit. So the thing I mentioned, the thing about the cardstock, it, it actually has been better than I thought. The first couple cards I did were black and white, grayscale, and I was anticipating that the cardstock was going to be tough to work on. Um, Oh, what's going on there? Oh, I see. I missed a little sliver of something. Um, anyway, the black and white was r real tough to work on. And I expected that would make it easier. So that was a little backwards feeling to me. And so I've just approached the color with a different... A little bit of a different um, strategy. I'm trying not to blend as much as I usually do. And just kind of... Find the color I need the first time if I can. So like this, I'm going to go with Baked Clay. For some of these dark, darker shadows. I might not be dark enough, so I might just undo... I might undo what I just said, which is... That I don't want to layer, I might go, I might layer over with a darker one. But for now, I'm going to go like this. Yeah, I think I am going to need to go darker. Shoot. I do like this baked clay color. It's one that I don't use all that often. And I remember um, Trevor, Trevor Murphy. Oh boy. I'll have to look that up. Is that the right name? Uh, the first ever Copic tutorial I watched was a guy, Trev. Yeah, I think it's Trev Murphy. And I, th I don't think his videos are up anymore as where he had. Um, but anyway, I remember he used baked clay and I liked how it looked. Do you see how that doesn't... I don't know if, how well you can see it, even though my camera's really close. It doesn't blend. It just sort of pushes the color around a little bit. So that's why i got to be careful. But that said, it doesn't look bad. It just... i got to be careful. <laughs> Let's see. Let's go with that dark purple. Oh, I have another idea. Actually, that might be perfect for this. There's a color I love in here, and I haven't tried it yet with these cards. It's called Redwood. There it is. And it tends to be 
like a step darker than baked clay. So let's see. And more red. Yeah, I like it. I think that'll work. I don't want to totally overdo it, but I think it'll work for these darkest areas. the bumps. I use purple, this dark purple iris, almost like black. Um, I tend to use it for just the darkest, darkest spots that I need. I'm not quite sure what's going on in here, but it doesn't really matter. I just kind of need to fake it with what I got in there. Wondering if I just kind of you know, pretend that's a little bit of that. I'm not worried about that little red spot. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Oh, maybe it'd be good to get a little red in there. Now that I think about it. Lipstick orange, that's not the right color. Nobody will know. Don't tell anybody. I thought about doing it, this a little differently because I run into this issue of the difficulty of drawing and talking every time. And I've thought about trying to go back and add in the audio later. But it just sounds like time consuming. <laughs> so I haven't done it yet. But that's part of the reason this is so dark. It's this strip right here, but it's in shadow. This is coming together quicker than I thought, too. Um, I usually spend a good couple hours or close on a card. Sometimes I whip one out in an hour. Not all that often. But the first two steps can be more time-consuming than you think, because I tend to meticulously make sure that those that things are in the right place before I move on to the next step. So I sometimes do the pencil stage, which sometimes take me a half hour, 45 minutes. Not always. Let's see. Just going to kind of make a mess here a little bit. Because there's some dirtier colors in here. Not, not dirty colors, that's not what I mean, but... Uh, it's good, I think, to not have... You know, to mix your colors in just a little bit. Got to be careful about muddying the water, so to speak. You don't want it muddy, but you do want it to kind of blend. There's this weird thing going on in the purple somewhere that I'm not quite sure what, what I like or don't like about what it's doing. But I'm going to try and keep working it to make it look a little more natural. I don't want it too dark in the parts there. I can use the... Uh, white later to go back on some of that too. Okay, let's not get bogged down with those tiny little details. Or these tiny little details. Right? And then went right back to tiny Yes, that's funny. It happens. What is missing? That's what I want to kind of where I'm getting close to. That could be darker. Well, that might be tricky. What color am I going to use? kind of have this thing where it's like, there's light, 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 and then there's super dark, and it can be tricky to find that in between. 
I also have a little bit of a thing where I tend to say, maybe this is a good thing. I'm, I'm pretty straight and forward and open about pointing out every little flaw as I'm trying, which maybe doesn't need to be done. You know what I mean? Um, oh, I made a mistake there. Yeah, you guys can see. I'm gonna do something weird. I'm gonna color that whole thing dark. Real dark. And then I'm gonna go back to lighten it up. Um, what am I missing here? Closer. I'm getting kinda close to done here, aren't I? That's, I gotta be careful with that blending thing. Oh, that line almost didn't line up. I'll fix it. That's an easy enough fix. I, part of the reason I chose this one, though, is for this reason. I thought it would just, I just kind of felt like it was going to be one that came together pretty, pretty well. And I feel like that's holding true. Because uh, I want, <laughs> I want to be able to show, show you guys me doing successful art, right? Like, there's been a couple times when I recorded a video and I was like, ah. Oh, that card didn't turn out as good as I wanted it to or hoped, so I didn't end up posting it. Now, I don't know. That's only partly true. Let's see, let's get... Face details is kind of the most important thing, I think. Need a little bit... Oh, I see. bit of color on the lips. And I sometimes do that. I just sort of grab towards my reds and see which one ends up in my hand. And see how I can use it. And in this case I got pretty lucky. It was pretty much a lipstick or a natural lip color type. And a little in between. Maybe it's light sometimes. I don't love this color, but I don't think there's another way I'm going to get that um, value, which is the important part. I mention this all the time as I'm doing these, but there's an artist I really like, a watercolor artist. His name is Stan Miller, I believe. And his saying is, you can use any color you like. Get the drawing right and get the values right. Use any color you like. So, to an extent, I do that. That just kind of grabbing works as long as I get something that's in the right value. I'm, not, I'm a little less worried about the color being perfect. Though I kind of want, let's see, maybe something like this that will give it a little bit more color than that was doing. Oh boy, that's not at all doing it. It's okay though. We can also kind of make it happen. It's diff one of the biggest challenges I have with talking and drawing is I'm not as focused on assessing what I'm doing, like looking back at the drawing and going, well, is this turning out good or not? Um, so it's easier to miss something that's like a big, you know, error, mistake, or area that I haven't given enough attention to yet, or whatever, anything kind of that sort. I want to touch that up a little bit, but it's hard because, like I said, they don't kind of blend. They just kind of push each other around. The colors push each other around. Turn. I think that's looking okay though. And I think it did get her intensity kind of like I was saying I wanted it to. Now, what can I do for my background? I think I want some red in here somewhere. And I did, did just a tiny bit of red and then 
didn't really find it much to do with it other than just touch this area and it's not um, I might find a couple other places to throw in a little red just to make it seem like it's worth using in the background. I also like that little kind of lime green. Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll try it for something like that. Let's see if I can find green. Where's that? Chartreuse. Yeah. Ooh, fluorescent. Is that too risky? Yeah, that's not going to do it anyways. It's not bad though. Let's start with it. Oh, that might be a Brazilian flag back there. I was just gonna just notice it's like the colors. But I don't want to get caught up making it look like a flag. Um, what I'm gonna do, let's see here. I like this blue color, and it's not really anywhere else, so I'll use it in the background. Let's start with that. And I might go a little darker, because it's definitely a dark background, which I kind of like. This is kind of what I do with backgrounds. I just start throwing colors in there and see how, how they work together. This is very dark down here, which doesn't have to mean that mine has to look dark. But I'm going to go dark at least in this corner. And I'm going to actually go completely different way. Dash of red is really good. Red is not the one I want to know. Is it too late? No. So that gave a little bit of color to the background, which I think maybe livens it up ah, at least a tiny bit. Dang, I have these super sharp things under my, where my knees go under my table, because there used to be a little pull-out thing like a keyboard would sit there, and I took the keyboard out, because it, or I took that tray out, but I never took away the rails, and I always bang my knees on them. It sucks. Okay, I'm going to see, this is why I need to stop and look a little bit myself and see how it's going. See if I missed anything or need to do anything. I used this purple, but really only in this little spot. It's not, it's not the purple I wanted either. Oh, I remember what I used. I used a different purple on my last card that I thought worked really well. Now I got 
So let's throw this in here just a little bit, just because even if it doesn't like totally show up, I think it's important that I use this color somewhere else. Other than just that one little spot in the back. on stuff like that right there. Ooh, that, that would need something. I just left it white, white. So angry. Do, this is going to be a little tricky. How am I going to do this? It's a lot of detail. I'm just going to go. Yes. Should come close to kind of. perfect. But I think I have to go kind of line by line like that. that would do this part that would really get into the detail of that sort of thing and I just that's not my most important thing here it's not to say that I, I, I just think that this will get the message across um, I, I like to do I'm stealing this quote from somebody and I'm not sure who I've definitely heard it from various places, but the illusion of detail rather than actually creating detail.
Okay, I think that did the trick. Um, got some work to do up here on this headband. So this is a multi-liner, but it's blue instead of black. And I see something up here with these like the sun rays or whatever. this little dream catcher net and I'm just gonna draw in the netting a little bit again this sort of thing doesn't have to be perfect just a few lines here and there where the light catches it and you get the idea and I think we're real close to being done here. I'm not going to call it 100% done because I almost always go back and go, Oh, I missed something here. I need a little more detail here. But I also think I'm at a pretty, pretty darn close to a point that I can call it good and show a close-up. Get on with things. And I doubt busted out quite a bit of work tonight. This is my fourth part of the night, and I got my last, I've only got one more to do for this set. Um, it'll be done tomorrow. By the time you guys see this video, this will have been done. Long. Far in, you know, way in the past. But, anyway, I think we're good there. And one more little, I guess I should use a color I've already used. How about camel? There's some camel hair here. Yeah, I didn't do a lot of detail on the face. So I'll have to look at whether I think that it's necessary to do more. But at this point right now, as I'm looking at it, I feel like it maybe is, you know, does what I needed it, what I needed to do. Well, they're lost. Her eyelashes. Pretty much lost in there. That's okay. I think it did get the intensity, like I said, as I drew in her face a little more. Get those shadows and values in there. Um, and now I'm at a point, oh, where I need to stop talking. Stop thinking, turn the camera off, and give it a good look and see how close I am to done. But because I'm on camera, I'll go ahead and sign it, and I think. Let's see. I'm going to sign it. I always look for a corner. I always, I don't know why, but I've always thought it was pretty cool to do, to sign on, sign sideways on sketch cards. Like that. Get lost a little bit in there, but I don't want it to detract anyway. I think we're good. There she is. Jessica Andraj, UFC Museum Collection, Canvas Collection 2019. And I'm Bradu. Thanks for watching.